Welcome to the Redbeard Embodiment Podcast. I am your host, Alex Green, and I'm on a mission to bring the power of embodiment to people all around the world. In this podcast, we explore how embodiment practices, trauma healing, and knowledge about the human nervous system can help us find our ground, discover new sources of meaning, and create connection in an ever-changing world. The deepest change is it body change. All right. Well, I am uh, really happy to be sitting down here with a uh, longtime friend and mentor and colleague, J.C. Sundley. And J.C. is uh, based in Madison, Wisconsin, although like me, she sometimes floats back and forth between Colorado, where she has some roots as well. Um, J.C. is a longtime TRE trainer. She's part of the uh, founding a team that uh, intro, uh, that created the um, TRE Tension and Trauma Release uh, uh, Certification Program here in the United States. Once uh, Dr. Berselli brought it back here uh, and started getting organized with uh, creating the certification program, uh, I was fortunate that JC was my uh, certification trainer. I think I met you back in around 2013 or 14. I can never remember the year. Yeah. But that was uh, that, and uh, JC is a uh, has a master's in psychology, is a licensed social worker, uh, as well as a longtime uh, yoga practitioner and teacher. Uh, as and she wears hats beyond that that we might also talk about <laughs> as as well. So um, in any case, JC, really happy to to sit down with you today. It's great to see you, Alex. Great. Great. Well, so as I told you, JC, you know, this is part of this, this recording is part of a, you know, a series that I'm doing. Um, uh, not all of the podcasts are TRE focused, but, but a lot of them are because I'm part of what I'm wanting to do is capture just some of the historical context around the, the, the uh, shaping of, you know, how TRE uh, got to uh, where we are today. And several weeks back, I, I, did a conversation with with David and heard about some of his, you know, even before it was called TRE, on um, the development of it there. But I thought it would be really nice to uh, to talk with you about some of the early days here in the United States. And I know that you have such a. Uh, I always like hearing your story about how how you found your way to TRE, which is you know in many ways always everybody has a different story, but I wonder if we could start there, maybe just sort of set the scene. Where were you? What were you doing? And how did, and how did the, uh, how did you hear the name Dr. David Berselli? <laughs> okay. I was actually, I was in, um, I was in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Um, again, like Alex said, I'm half in Colorado, half in Wisconsin. So I was in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, and I was working for a woman who did neurofeedback. And she came in all excited one day, and this was in late 2008. She came in one day, we're really excited. She said, there's a trauma therapist in the area. I've been wanting to meet him forever. And we've got, you know, he's here t in 10 days because another person can't canceled on him. Without thinking, I said, I'll put together something. And I had no idea what it was, what he did, who he was, nothing right. about David whatsoever. So I met up with a person by the name of Rita Marsh, who runs a nonprofit in, in Carbondale with Davi Nikent. And she connected me with Rita, and Rita had heard of David. So we put together this workshop in 10 days. We had about 50 or 60 people there. The day, <laughs> the day before the workshop, she asked me if I'd go pick him up at the airport. And I said, yeah. I said, but do you have a, a picture of him or a book? I have no idea who this guy is, what he looks like or anything. Sure. So she gave me his book and I saw his picture. So I went to Aspen to pick the guy up, met him. And on our conversation on our way back to Glenwood Springs, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but I remember looking at him and saying, I'll do whatever you want me to do, David. It was like, it was like, it was just there. Um, and hmm. I have been with Dave ever since working alongside and, and, behind the scenes a lot not not so much in front but behind the scenes a lot so dave came and did a workshop there and 
we had like 50, 60 people. And I remember I still have a picture of him standing on a table doing his lectures because people couldn't see him. There were so many in the room. It was in a gymnasium. Uh, interesting. He was yeah. standing on a table doing a lecture on the yeah. table. Um, got to know him. Like I said, had no idea who he was or what he did. Just knew I had to do something. And I've heard other people tell me that story through the years. Mm. That something just clicked. What... um. Do you remember, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, because it sounds to me like you had that feeling. Um, I mean, on the one hand, you kind of reflexively said yes to organizing a training. And I'm guessing you've had some background that led you to be, feel confident about your organizational skills. I've, done, anyway. I've done event producing for years. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So you immediately, you reflexively said yes. And then you picked him up in the airport. And it sounds like you had that, the clarity that, this was a person that you were going to uh, spend a lot of time with and, and, and really put dedicate uh, a lot of your time and energy towards even before you did the workshop. Do you remember anything about, uh, I don't know, was it, was it his uh, presence? Was it the things he was talking about? Was it just a gut feeling? What do you, what, what do you think that was for you? I actually, Alex, have never experienced anything like that in my life. And if, if on a spiritual note, it doesn't yeah. matter what your belief system is. Um, from a yogic tradition, it was my dharma. Mm -hmm. And it was instantaneous. I knew I had to do it, whether I wanted to or not. It was just there. Got it. Wow. Very cool. That that first seminar. So place us in time. Is this around like 2009, 2010, something like that? This was late 2008 that we brought okay. him to Glenwood Springs. In 2009, I had been working with Dave, and he had come to work in the fire department, police department, um, Jay Walkers, which is a drug and alcohol center, military. Okay. We were just really trying to push TRE in the area. And um, in 2009, I created a logo for him, um, which I tease him now. It cost him $225 for the logo back then. So and it, it's, it's, still the logo, it's still the logo we use today, right? It, well, it is. It's a semblance of the logo. Um, okay. But I wanted to just tell you what the logo means so people can have an, an idea. The logo, if you've seen it, is a picture of the world and an eagle. And it's got TRE for all. And it has the old one has TRE, um, release, rebalance, renew. It's got the, the original one actually had a dove. Because the idea came from myself, my daughter, and a friend of mine, where I created the world because it was such an international global thing. Right. Uh, my daughter came up with the idea of a bird flying. And the idea that it cr originally created was um, a dove because it's a bird of peace. Hmm. Now that changed into an eagle because Dave was working in the military and wanted to be in the military and a dove was too soft. So we changed it to an eagle. <laughs> okay. And then a friend of mine came or, up with the word patriotic release, balance renew, which is exactly what TRE does. Right. Yeah. Um, well, so that global nature of it, I wonder if you could just speak to that a little bit, because so it sounds, you know, this is probably around the time. I mean, Dave spent the bulk of his career living overseas. Uh, was this uh, was this around when he was um, spending more time in the United States again? Yes, he was. It was actually it was very it was brand new in the United States. Okay. This was like this was 2009. It was brand new. And um, in some ways, the 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 um, the growth of TRE in the even though Dave is American, we were in a way the last you know, we were one of the one of the one, we're one of the younger communities because he because seeds were planted in, in other places first. Um, for, you know, for folks who are trying to understand this global nature, which to me, that's one of the really unique things about TRE and TRE for all the organization is how how global and multicultural it is. Could you just share a little, little bit about that, that global element? Well, we when we started putting together, how can we teach people to teach other people and make sure that they're safe? Okay. Right, I remember right. David at the beginning saying, you need to be grounded and you need to keep your person safe. Otherwise it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of where we're gone from there. And so he talked to us a lot about different countries around the world and what they were doing. And Dave was just going around telling people they could train other people. 
mm. at that point. It was like there was no organization to it. Yeah. And Sherry Mills and Joan McDonald and myself, and there was Heiner and Mariano from Brazil were all mm. involved. And there was a woman in California named Flanagan. We decided to put together kind of a, a structure for it on how to teach people to teach TRE because we were in the United States. Mm. The United States is a lot more structured. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of in the background of that. I wasn't writing the certification that came more from Joan and Sherry. Um, okay. But I had input in it. Um, I did a modification DVD with Mary Shriver. Um, so that part of it, and we wrote it originally doing a level one and a level two. Mm. Level one was teaching individuals. Level two was teaching groups. Well, we found right. out later that Germany had it where level one was teaching groups and level two was teaching individuals. Sure. So we thought, okay, we need to figure this out where we can, because people travel around the world. Right, right. So that's kind of where we change to TRE providers. And so it, everybody which in a way was a com combination of level one and level two got joined together, which is the form that we have in the certification today. Right. So it could be more international and global rather than each country having their own certification requirements. I see. So in those early days, like the Glenwood Springs days, when, when you were organizing like that first event, who, who was the, so TRE wasn't really known yet. But Dave must have had a little bit of a reputation. Who were who was the audience? Social workers or we addictions had, folks or yeah, we had addictions. We had fire department. We had police department. That's who was in military. Hmm. There was a young guy by the name of Adam McCabe, and David has a lot of videos of Adam. Yeah, um, and I literally fell in love with this kid. Um, I met him. I actually read an article in a newspaper and I thought, I've got to get to know this kid. And so I contacted Adam and Adam helped bring people to Glenwood Springs from the military. So and, and he was an Iraq an Iraqi war veteran. He's an Iraqi, right? yeah, a vet. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah was, I didn't I didn't know that story. You read about him and that and then con and that's how he came into the and then I found him. community. Yeah, I read the wow. story and I went, I've got to find this guy. Um, because he had talked about being in all kinds of therapy and nothing was working. Hmm. And I knew David was coming to do a workshop. So I, I tracked him down. It, Colorado on the Western slope was pretty small. So somebody knew him. It was like, yeah, you were able to find him. We found him. Yeah. Yeah. I met him once. I met him at the Tempe um, advanced training um, okay. and thought it, and, and certainly saw his videos and he was, did such a good job of speaking to the benefits of TRE for post-traumatic stress for vets at which, you know, um, the countless uh, people have, uh, you know, vets have been helped, but it's nice when you have a spokesperson in a way or somebody who, you know, benefited firsthand is in that community. He's, he's going to be the kind of guy who will bring, get other, you know, young men, uh, Trump, you know, interested. That's what's so wonderful about TRE is the fact that you can go in and train somebody to teach other people. I'm not a vet. And we taught the VA hospital here in Madison, Wisconsin in 2017. Mm -hmm. But I taught people how to teach vets. I'm not a vet, so I don't teach them. Right. So and the police officers the same way. It's like you go in and you teach a policeman and they can go in and teach their guys. Um, so that yeah. that's how it works so well with going into these different agencies. Hmm. Yeah. So, so then, so then flat fast forwarding a couple of years, was it around, was it like 2012, 2013, or when was the, you know, the cert, the global, you know, the global certification sort of standardized in well, the, the first, way that we have it first, now? I'm going to, I'm going to, can I share a funny story with you? <laughs> of course, please do. Okay. Uh, David came and did the first level one training in, in Aspen, Colorado. Sherry Mills and Dave and I um, put it together. David taught it. And um, that's actually when I had my aha moment that changed my life. But what he did when we got done, we, we were t sitting around my house and we were talking and going, okay, well, should we try the certification program? And it was like, okay, let's give it a shot. Maybe we'll have a couple of people that want to do it. We had 20 people that wanted to sign up for the certification program. 
we got back to my house and um, I said, what should we do? And Sherry said, Sherry said, I'm going to Puerto Rico. And David says, I'm going to Brazil. And they said, good luck, JC, you're on your own. <laughs> so that's how I became a trainer. Oh my, oh my gosh. And so, so that, so you had to finish the training for these 20, 20 people. Yeah. yeah I, I certified them. Yeah. 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 And that's actually yeah. when I first started working with groups. Okay. Um, we did it as a group. And so that was, that was what, about 2012 or? That was 2010. Okay. 2010. Yeah. Or March of 2010. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. So, so, you know, um, maybe for those who are listening, you know, some certainly are going to already know TRE and then some uh, less so. To me, one of the things that stands out about TRE when we compare it to other, you know, nervous system modalities like somatic experiencing, to me, one of the unique things is, sure, you can do it one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, uh, it can be done in groups. Many of David's experiences overseas were leading large groups. That's still a big emphasis of how we teach it now. And you're known, your reputation is as a person uh, just very comfortable with groups of different sizes. Um, and so I, and I think you mostly teach, when you teach TRE, you're mostly teaching groups yes. as opposed to one-on-one -on -one work. What, what is it about group work that, that you really like that kind of brings, brings you alive? For me, and I did this as a therapist before I did TRE, what happens in a group is everybody has their own expertise. I'm not an expert in anything. And when I have a group of people together, they all share their expertise. And when they all share their expertise, we all learn 10 times more than we would with be sitting and trying to tell somebody something. Mm. So I use it as a learning tool for everybody um, and everybody feels heard in that group. It's like, wow, you know this and okay, you know that and you know this. And um, so we use each other to learn from. Hmm. Um, and that's why I love, I love working in groups. And so that's true both, you know, both when you're certifying providers, because you've done that for 13, 14 years, um, and also, you've probably have you've pro led a lot of public groups as well. I imagine. Um, what I what I, I, I know because I've helped you with a few, like uh, like at a Monona Terrace and other right. places. Yeah. What I what I, and what I teach in my certification programs, which I, I actually don't teach very many anymore, um, but I teach the difference between teaching and facilitating, and I call myself a facilitator, not a teacher. I do not like standing in front of a group of people telling them things. That's not my style. I would much rather sit in a circle and have everybody share with what's going on and, and have input in that. I see. So I teach the difference between teaching and facilitating. So I call myself a facilitator. Okay. All right. Yeah. Very cool. Um, let's see. What? So, so. I guess I'm curious, you know, I've talked about, you know, we've been talking about the the early days of the certification, how that got shaped um, and your, your role as a, as an educator for the organization. And, uh, and I think what's the word you've used? Well, producer, I think. Event producer. Because, yeah. Because you've done a lot of, of helping David uh, create, um, you know, events and, and things like that. But um, on the personal side, I'm curious, uh, for you with TRE, I'm always curious, like what somebody has, what their, what their personal practice has been. And so, you know, sometimes that's hard to talk about. You don't have to talk about every aspect of it, but I just wonder um, uh, what's that been your journey on the personal level by, you know, knowing about the, the tremor mechanism and whatnot. Well, a couple of, couple of things I'm going to share with, I, I said, I, I was immediately drawn to David and knew I had to work with him. Didn't know why. Mm. But when he was teaching the module one in Aspen, I remember him teaching the belief system and talking about post-traumatic growth. And it was a huge aha moment for me because I traveled and I'd learned all these and what, have all this education and blah, 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 trying to figure out what to do. And he taught, I had, um, I had a little sister that was four 
when I was 19 that died. And we went through a year and I was kind of like mom to her because I was giving my mom a break all the time. Mm. So when she died, it blew my belief system totally up. I had no idea what to do. And like David talks about it, trying to, you try and make it go back to where it should be or where, where it was before. Mm. And you can't do that. And so I spent probably 10 years trying to go back and making it work until I saw David teach how you can evolve from the trauma. Mm. So it was a huge aha changing moment for me. So it was like this light bulb went off. Yep. Ever since then, I also run on adrenaline being a social worker. I mean, I did child welfare. I did all kinds of event producing. It's like you run on adrenaline. Mm. And I remember at the level two training we did in Aspen, um, all of a sudden I had been doing TRE for probably six months. And <laughs> I remember uh, making sure everything was all done and blah, 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 blah. You know, here, run, run, run here, there, and make sure everything's done. And I remember being able to sit down and actually listen to the man talk. Mm. And it was like, I didn't have anything to do. That was the first, it was like, oh my God my nervous system had calmed down and down regulated to where I could actually hear and see what he was talking about. It was very, um, again, another aha moment with David. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's cured things like my TMJ. It, I mean, anytime I, uh, you know, after doing it for 14, 15 years now, I, my body will actually just tremor when it wants to. I don't, I don't yeah. do a daily practice or anything. It just starts tremoring right. when it needs to. Um, but those are the two major things that I can remember happening. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. Um, and I, I can really relate that it you just jogged a memory for me from the the I where where I I remember also in the in the module one and and you know that actually that my first series. David came for module one, which was great. Sherry was there too. David did a lot of the lecturing. I think and then that just, was in Chicago, wasn't it? No, no, it, it was actually in Madison. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but but anyway, but then that was an example where then you know you know he he you he he you had to do module two and three because or or you know the the rest of it. Um, but but what I do remember is the same thing. Um, I mean, there were many parts of the you know, my, my, the, that a lot of it was sort of opening my eyes at that time, but what re the, the, the lecture on the belief systems really moved me as well for a few reasons. One that it was a, it was a framework that was respectful and um, uh, open to, or recognized that of course people bring their their um, uh, their belief, their various belief systems. We can't uh, we can't pretend that that's not a part of what uh, people bring to the table, but I really appreciated the, um, what's the word, basically holding space that the TRE for many people is a quite powerful experience, uh, uh, can lead to some powerful experiences, but it put it in a framework that was, uh, yeah, basically respectful of all uh, tradi traditions, religious and otherwise. So that was one thing, just that sort of just a broad scope around it. Uh, but also that 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 concept of post-traumatic growth was new for me at that time, too. And 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 the idea that, um, you know, some of the biggest ruptures uh, leave us scrambling for making for meaning making um, and uh, no one wishes for those kinds of um nobody invites those kinds of ruptures and traumas into their lives, but there's at least the possibility of something new being uh, born out of that. Yes. Um, and so, and so I think that that was what hooked me on the, the, you know, trauma work in general, that, that, that serving people that to me, there's a certain degree of optimism. I mean, I'll, I always feel what's the word, um, you know, a bit, you know, I feel somber in the face of people's stories. Um, but something that being in this field, I really appreciate is there's this certain kind of optimism, which is 
that you know new growth uh, is is possible and it's powerful and it's moving and it's right. and, and it's, Dave calls uh, it evolution and yeah it's, it's like it, you can take it beyond yeah, yeah it's evolutionary we we are designed if we were designed for that and so uh, I'm just remembering how how impactful that was for me yep. too so yeah great to great to share that. Um, I, I'm always curious about the the topic of of you know you know we think of Terry as helping with stress trauma um, helping with um, uh, physical things sciatica back pain you know all, all those kinds mm -hmm. of things but I'm always curious about when it opens up new doors you know creatively or people's just sort of emotional self expression and things like that and I wanted to ask you and I we haven't talked about this in a while but I know that a, a very different part of your work has been, um, working with, with masks. Um, uh, and, and I, and I don't know if there's a connection to Tiari, but I wonder if there is, I wonder if you could just tell us about that work that you do. Well, masks started before Tiari. Okay. okay. This was back in the early nineties and my business partner and I just became creative and started our own nonprofit. And we made plaster face masks of people. It was when the AIDS community was sky high and there was very much pre a lot of prejudice in the AIDS community. So okay. we started making face masks and we made this huge four foot by seven foot um, exhibit. And we actually um, premiered at the Guthrie Art, or Walker Art Center and Guthrie Theater in Minneapolis on our debut. Mm. And we made faces of AIDS patients. And then we made face uh, masks of children and black people and white people and Asian people. And when you mm. put them on this big exhibit, you couldn't tell the difference. It was a humanity. And we called it Faces of Love, A Living Legacy. Mm. So we, we did that for about 10 years and couldn't make a living doing it. So it was like we were he was a scientist. He still is a scientist. And I was a social worker. And it was like, we can't make a living doing this nonprofit. It doesn't work. I see. Um, but we did a lot of groups with that. And um, I have recently been combining TRE with mask making because of my business partner, Robert's um, scientific background on how to do this. And then my therapy background with how to resolve it. And we actually did a mask on David a year ago. Oh, cool. Um, and and um, he had a really nice experience. Um, but it's hmm. it's taking the mask off and seeing who you are behind that mask. Because we hmm. all wear the masks in the, in the world. Um, so it's the same yeah. thing with TRE. It's... And so are, are you, are you doing, so are you doing workshops around that or, uh, um, or what's the, is that something you're kind of still active for you or? Yeah. Um, my, my business partner, Robert and I, um, he lives in Flagstaff, Arizona. So when I'm in Colorado, I'm a lot closer to him. I see. Um, he was at, we were actually going to do a workshop this next weekend and we canceled it because I'm moving. So uh, uh, yes, we're, starting to work a little bit more with it. I thought it'd be kind of fun to mix it with TRE um, and have people, and David actually did Tremor while we were doing a mask on him. So it oh, was cool. kind of cool. Very cool. Well, so the other the other thing you've that I know you've been up to in the, cause I, over the last several years and our, this had begun just before the pandemic, you know, that we were going to have some events in Madison and one, and part of it was going to be, uh, you know, kind of a commemoration of, um, I don't know if it was the 10 year or something uh, anniversary to the, to the certification program in the United States, but, and obviously that couldn't happen because that was scheduled in March of 2020. Right. Um, but you've, over these last several years, you've been doing some work around that documenting, um, uh, putting together some materials and documenting things. Some of that may be under wraps. I'm not sure, but is there anything you could share about that, that the project you're working on? No, we actually, there were two projects. One, Sherry Mills and I put a book together for David for his retirement. And you were, I think you were, you're in that book. Right. Um, so a lot of the trainers are in the book and they were private messages to David, a lot of pictures and stuff. So we presented that to him um, a year ago. 
Mm. And now we're working on the actual history of TRE, which is is, is so I, ironic that you're doing the same thing on a video. And mm. um, so we're actually getting a hold of all trainers and I have a whole lot of paperwork right now on just linear what happened in what country when. And, and are, are you going to... Will, what will the format be like? Or will this be, you're going to put together a book or a document or a web, you know? Or, or Joan this... and Sherry and I are going to work on that in June. Um, yeah. It's been suggested doing a couple minute videos from people. I've got paperwork from people. I'm not sure how that's going to look, but we'll make sure that it's available on the website. Um, because I think it's so important to know where you come from. Hmm. And to remember where you come from and why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and then to move forward with it and build on it because it not everything there is working. I mean, it's expanding so much. It's like, okay, but take take what we've done and make it better. Hmm. Uh, on, on that note of remembering where we came from and where we are going, um, I was curious, you know, as you look out, you know, we're what, maybe 15 years into certification here in the United States. Uh, I don't know what the latest numbers are for the, but the, you know, there's probably six or 7,000 providers. Um, yeah. Don't, don't I, quote me on that. So, you know, so there's, either. so there's been growth. What's, what's in your view, if you look out over a 10 or 20 year time horizon, what, what do you think, um, how would you like to see TRE uh, grow and expand? What what areas do you think it could influence? How could it serve the world uh, over the next couple of decades? I think what we're doing is wonderful. I think we all have different ideas on how to make it happen. And again, going back to the beginning when David said for us to stay grounded and keep our people safe, and that's what we need to teach. Mm. Um, I like, because of what I've done in the past, I like working with policemen so they can go into the police departments and work with other policemen. I like working with a VA so I can work with a, teach a vet how to do this so they can go out and teach other vets. So that's kind of where my love is right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm half retired, so I'm both. <laughs> my, my mind doesn't know how old my body is. <laughs> Well, you just got to shake a little more, Jason. I think so. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Um, what what haven't we covered that would be that we should that we should touch on? Well, I you know just a little more history I can give you is is the um, we did the first global sort of global meeting of trainers in Costa Rica oh, in right. 2011, and we had a lot of fun, and that was kind of where the organization, international organization started to build. Mm. We didn't do um, the nonprofit till 2014, but this was in 2011, first part of 2011. So we got and together there, in Costa Rica. There were, and, and, and wasn't that the first of several kind of- um, It was the first, uh, yeah. Planning meetings uh, right. where, yeah, okay. And then they had one every couple of years, they had one in South Africa after that. And then I know they've been in, several other places, including Japan. You were then Japan and Croatia. Japan, Croatia yeah. were the ones that I was there for. Yeah, this yeah. is all pre-pandemic. Yeah. yeah. And then we did a big um, fundraiser in Las Vegas, which was a lot of fun too in 2011. Um, and a lot of people from around the globe came to that. So it was very international. Huh. Um, Hopefully nobody gambled away all the uh, all of the... I all have the, no idea. We just <laughs> <laughs> all the fundraised dollars. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Mary Shriver um, was working on. She was a provider, and Mary and I worked together. And um, she knew a lot of people in Vegas. She lived in Vegas. Her husband was an entertainer, so um, we kind of got an in. It's the first time Dave and I ever rode in a limousine. It's in Las <laughs> Vegas. So. The perfect place to yeah. to to have your first limo ride. Very right. cool. Very cool. Great. Well, JC, thank you so much for just um, uh, sharing, uh, you know, giving, giving just a window into what that, that developmental stage was like and kind of some of the spirit that, that shaped 
uh, the form that we have TRE in today. So yeah, really appreciate hearing Thank all that. Thank you, Alex. And it was so much fun going back through some of this stuff and talking to a few people and saying, uh, what do you remember here? What did we do here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was a lot of fun putting it together. Very cool. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing um, what you and Sherry and Joan uh, are piecing together. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Super, super. Thank you so much, Alex. It was great. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Redbeard Embodiment Podcast. To learn more, visit us at redbeardsomatictherapy.com or send me an email at alex at redbeardsomatictherapy.com. If today's conversation resonated with you, help spread the word by subscribing and sharing with others. Hope to see you next time.